In chapter 14, we're going to talk about uncollectible accounts receivable. And again, this is when people or businesses do not pay you. Some type of record has to be recorded. Three Green uses terms of 2-10 and 30 when selling to customers on account. The company expects customers to pay in full within 30 days. Three Green begins sending customer periodic reminders when their accounts are more than 30 days past due. More serious action may be taken if a customer's account is not paid within 90 days. Three Green may stop selling on account to a customer until payment is received. Three Green is aware that a small percentage of its customers will never pay their account in full. With each sale on account, a business takes the risk that a customer will never pay the amount owed. This risk is an expense of doing business. The expense must be recorded in the same accounting period that the revenue is earned. Accurate financial reporting records require that expenses be recorded in the same fiscal period in which the expenses contribute to the earning of revenue. As we've talked before, this is the accounting concept matching expenses with revenue. It's just making sure that expenses are recorded in the same fiscal period in which you earned that type of revenue. Accounts receivable that cannot be collected are called uncollectible accounts. The expense is recorded in an uncollectible account expense. Some businesses also refer to uncollectible accounts as bad debts. A business cannot know the amount of money it will fail to collect from uncollectible accounts. It's hard to estimate this amount. Generally, accepted accounted principles, GAAP, require a business to record an estimate of its uncollectible accounts. Estimating uncollectible accounts expense at the end of the fiscal period records the expense of uncollectible accounts in the same period as the related revenue. So basically you are going to figure out from past experience what percent of your accounts are not collectible. And you will record this expense every fiscal period, this estimated amount. The adjusting entry to record estimated uncollectible accounts affects two general ledger accounts. The amount is debited to uncollectible account expense and credit to an account titled Allowance for Uncollectible Accounts, which is a new account for us. Both of these are. Allowance for Uncollectible Accounts is a contra asset to its related account, Accounts Receivable. We've talked about contra assets before. They reduce a related account. Contra count is assigned the next number of the accounting number sequence after its related account in the chart of accounts. Three Green's accounts receivable account number is 1130. The contra account, allowance for uncollectible accounts, is numbered 1135. And you can probably figure this out. Your accounts receivable has a normal debit balance. Since allowance for uncollectible accounts is a contra account to accounts receivable, it will have a credit balance. The other account that is affected is your uncollectible accounts expense. Remember, it is an expense, so therefore it'll fall under the expense classification. Crediting the estimated value of uncollectible accounts to a contra account is called the allowance method of recording losses from uncollectible accounts. The difference between an asset's account balance and its related contra account is called the book value. The difference between the balance of accounts receivable and its contra account allowance for uncollectible accounts is called the book value of accounts receivable. The book value of accounts receivable, which is reported on the balance sheet, represents an estimate of the total amount of accounts receivable the business expects to collect in the future. The amount of the accounts receivable a business expects to collect is called the net realizable value. This might sound a little confusing right now, but you'll get the hang of it as we do the problems. Two methods are commonly used to estimate uncollectible accounts receivable. The first one is the percent of sales method, and this assumes that a percent of credit sales will become uncollectible. 
For example, a business might estimate that 0.5% of its sales on account will become uncollectible. A business with a credit sales of $700,000 would estimate that $3,500 will not be collectible. The second method is a percent of accounts receivable method. And this uses an analysis of accounts receivable to estimate the amount that will not be collected. Three Green uses a percent of accounts receivable method, and that's what we'll be using in our problems. Percents are usually based on past experience. A business that experiences a 1% rate of uncollectible accounts can reasonably expect that 1% of future accounts receivable will be uncollectible. However, the business might have valid reasons to change these estimates. For example, an economic downturn could cause more customers than before to be unable to pay their accounts. Or a business might tighten its credit policy, so only customers with good credit scores are allowed to buy on account. A business must not, however, change its estimate to achieve some other goals, such as reducing the net income to avoid taxes. The book value of accounts receivable in the financial accounts must be a reasonable and unbiased estimate of the money a business expects to collect in the future. The accounting concept neutrality is applied when a process of making accounting estimates is free from bias. Again, a business may use either the percent of sales or the percent of accounts receivable method to estimate its uncollectible accounts. Regardless of the method used, a business must ensure that it reports a reasonable and unbiased estimate of future uncollectible accounts. And again, three greens and our problems will use the percent of accounts receivable method. The first step in using the percentage of accounts receivable method is to total accounts by age groups. Analyze an account receivable according to when they are due is called the aging of accounts receivable. Most businesses group accounts in 30-day periods. In this example, 3Green uses past cash receipts data to estimate the percent of each age group that will become uncollectible in the future. You can see they have their age groups by 30 days. 1 to 30 days past due, 31 to 60, 61 to 90, and over 90 days past due. If you look at the customers are listed here, their account balances and so forth, and what is currently due right now from those accounts. You can see Belk and Jensen, if you subtract $1,495 and 18 cents from $3,247.36, you will see that they have $1,752.18 past due. According to their records, they have just bought it within the last 30 days, so their account balance is due within the 30 day period. If you look down to Skinner College, they owe $2,578.35 and the records show that they haven't paid for a while, you can see over here that their entire balance is over 90 days past due. Usually the longer it's away from your due date, there's a chance that you probably aren't going to collect from these businesses. The percent for each age group is used to calculate the total estimate of uncollectible accounts. Of the total accounts receivable on December 31st, the percent for each age group is used to calculate the total estimate of uncollectible accounts. Of the total accounts receivable, right here, this $20,381.81, the company estimates, the company estimates that $2,509.25 will become uncollectible. You can see this, how they figure this out. The current $11,000. $774.01 comes from right here, the current amount. They figure that 1% of that will be uncollectible. As the amounts get further away from payment, the percent goes up. And you can see you just grab each one of these, take it times the percent, and you will see the amount that's uncollectible. At the end of the fiscal period, some general ledger accounts need to be brought up to date before financial statements are prepared. In part one of this book, Delgado Web Services recorded adjusting entries to bring supplies and prepaid insurance up to date. 
Three Green has estimated that $2,509.25 of its accounts receivable will become uncollectible. Three Green needs to record an adjusting entry to bring its allowance for uncollectible accounts balance to a $2,509.25 credit. The general ledger balance of allowance for uncollectible accounts is $125.15 credit. This balance is the unused allowance estimate from prior fiscal period. That is, it was not needed to cover any uncollectible accounts. When the allowance account has a previous credit balance, the amount of the adjusting entry, $2,384.10, is added to the previous balance. The new account balance, $2,509.25, is the estimated amount of uncollectible accounts. Four questions are asked to analyze the adjustments for the allowance for uncollectible accounts. Number one, what's the balance of the account being adjusted? You can see that allowance for uncollectible accounts, that balance is $125.15. The second question is, what should the balance be for this account? Allowance for uncollectible account balance should be a credit of $2,509.25. The third question, what must be done to correct the account balance? We need to increase our allowance for uncollectible account by $2,384.10, the difference between our beginning balance and our new balance. Question number four, what adjusting entries must be made? We need to debit our uncollectible account expense for $2,384.10, and we will credit allowance for uncollectible accounts for $2,384.10. Going on to our general journal. We will be recording our adjusting entries in the same place we did in Unit 1. They go into your general journal. The steps, remember we write the title adjusting entry centered on the first line. We write the title here because there is no source document for this transaction. It is just a procedure we go through at the end of the fiscal period. We'll write the date, the end of the fiscal period. We'll write our debit entry first, uncollectible account expense. We'll write the amount that we're going to record. We will indent slightly. We will write our credit, which is allowance for uncollectible accounts. We will put that balance in there also. And that is how you do the adjusting entry for the allowance for uncollectible accounts.